All right, so here's the deal. I kind of have a love-hate relationship with Filson. That being said, they do have some incredible catalogs with like double page open, you know, photos. It really, they do a nice job. If there's one thing that Filson is good at, it's marketing. Um, they really make this whole rugged lifestyle very appealing. Now, that being said, I think that what we're going to find inside this catalog is a lot of overpriced stuff. Unfortunately, a lot of their core items have just gone up in price. Everything's going up in price, so I understand it. Inflation's a little bit out of control right now. But anyway, let's look through this catalog because they actually do have some pretty cool stuff in here. Some things that I think are overpriced, which I'm going to give you some alternatives to. Let's dig in. All right, so here we go. You know, I always like these catalog reviews. It's just like, I don't know. It's just kind of fun. Reminds me of being a kid looking through the Toys R Us catalog, except for it's expensive things that I don't want to buy. Anyway, so here we go. We got the lined wool packer coat. Now, this thing is $875. Is that right? All right. Well, um, now, okay. Be, uh, that being said, it, it's very nice looking. What you basically have is, I think, the cape coat, they would call it. This also, I thought, used to be called the double mac when they would cover the shoulder with a second layer of Mackinac fabric. And, and I mean, that being said, it's it's definitely going to be a warm coat. I think it looks really cool. That Mackinac wool is is really tough to beat. This is 26 ounce Mackinac wool. So, you know, it's, it's really hard to find a company that does this kind of thing. Matter of fact, I think it's very smart of Filson to start their catalog with their wool offerings, because in my opinion, that's what they actually do best. And look, here we go. We got even more Mackinac wool stuff. Now, this is a bit of an interesting one. I, I don't, this is the lined Mackinac wool vest. I have the regular, which I'm sure we'll see later, the regular unlined Mackinac wool vest, and it's spectacular. It really is. It doesn't seem to wear, no matter how many armloads of wood I bring inside or what I'm doing in it. I wouldn't want to spill anything on it, but besides that kind of thing, it's really fantastic. I'll bet you that this is is damn good too. It's also 300 bucks. $300 for that, you know? You can get a Sherpa lining similar to this from many, many brands, you know? I, I, I did a review a little while ago on Tough Duck versus the Filson Vest, which I think is the closest match here. Um, Carhartt, of course, has them. Dickies, I bet you Duluth Trading Company. So if you're actually going to be using it for work, maybe there are better options, especially for value. But, you know, I mean, if this is what you want and you like that wool, I mean, I think that actually that pattern's pretty cool, too. Yeah, so there we go. There's the Mackinac Wool Cruiser. I have this exact coat. It was my father's. So that just shows you how long these things last. This did go up $100 last year. So if this time last year you picked one up, you saved yourself 100 bucks. Now these things are uh, $500, you know, and that's just a lot of money. Now, uh, you know, even in that video that I did where I did alternatives to the Mackinac Cruiser, people were talking about how, yeah, it's 500 bucks, but you will have it forever. And that's true. You honestly will, or several lifetimes, as in my case. So if you want to buy it because you like it and you just plan on keeping it and maybe passing it down, well, in that case, you got to look at your price per wear. Still, I think it's a lot of money. And the interesting thing is in here, you're going to see a lot of people working, camping, hiking, doing stuff like that, which I don't feel like the average Filson customer does much of anymore. This originally was meant for timber cruisers, hence the name Mackinac Wool Cruiser. Um, you know, most people I think wear it now are, you know, getting the oil changed in their Range Rover. So here we go. Really nice looking, you know, full page spread of this beautiful photo. Uh, you know, two guys in a canoe. It looks like you got some snowshoes there. That's what I mean. They really can make this, this, this lifestyle. They really romanticize it. I mean, it looks very appealing. And I love the fact that they take the space to do this. Very smart on their part, in my opinion. So here we go again. This is, I mean, I like the way they've changed up some of the plaids on these. They now make them so they're, um, you know, limited editions and stuff like that. This is really cool. This cape coat, they're calling it. Again, I thought that at one point this was called the double Mac, but I can't remember if that's true or not. If it is, I'll try to throw up on the screen if I can find something older. Again, it gives you just another layer over the top, you know, over the shoulders there. You know, they do, they do charge you a little bit more for it, but, you know, it is hard to beat that that wool. And here you have it in a pair of pants with some suspenders. You know, pretty damn cool. And I'll bet you, somebody was saying earlier in one of the comments that these are especially good for bushcraft because they're warm, they wear very well, they're 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 um, fire resistant, they're also quiet. So that's something I didn't take into consideration that they don't make any noise. There's no rustling, you know. So 
I don't know. Um, really cool looking sweater here. I think that's actually really nice. 275 bucks. Um, you know, if it's 100% wool, then that's what you're going to pay for it. Uh, and it looks like, yes, it is Highland wool. So actually not, not out of the ordinary there. So here was something that I thought was interesting. Now, this is kind of like a recreation or a, you know, reimagining of, I guess, the original wool cruiser. So that's pretty cool. Um, they use a little bit of a different wool for this. This is 23 ounce wool. So that's something new. Um, and actually, I did a whole history of the Filson Mackinac Cruiser, all the different versions that it went through. There was a point where this pocket here was offset just a little bit for some reason. They also used to have a watch pocket or a compass pocket, depending on what you call it. So they've actually gone through a lot of different iterations. If they had taken this and used those original enamel buttons that they had on the old, old ones, that would be really cool. And it would be especially cool if they offered it in regular chest sizes, which they unfortunately don't anymore. So why you would get this one versus the other one, I really don't know. It's the same price. Uh, it's a slightly lighter weight. Eh, whatever. Now, here you go. Here you have an... This is kind of what I was talking about, all right? You see this here, this, this double Mackinac cap. Now, I'm sure it's beautiful and made very nice and it's very warm. But the Stormy Cromer version of this has been the staple for a long, long time. And that's actually called the Snowdrift. It's $52.99, the Stormy Cromer version. And here, look at what they're getting for this. 125 bucks. That's a lot of money. You could buy two Stormy Cromers for the price of this. And that's what I'm talking about. Sometimes they do stuff like this where I'm like... Really, Filson? Where's the value? I, I don't know. It kind of gets me annoyed a little bit. This is the Mackinac Shack, uh, <laughs> Mackinac Shirt Jack. The Shack Jert. Anyway, I have one of these. It's in their, their military plaid, and it's a really cool limited edition that they did a while ago. I like it a lot. Here's the deal, though, and I'm going to have to do a video on this eventually. If it was between the Mackinac Cruiser, the original one, not this one, um, and the Mackinac Shirt Jack, I would go with the Mackinac Cruiser. Now, the reason for that is one small fatal flaw of this shirt, or Jack shirt, I guess, is the side pockets are way too far off to the side. I mean, you basically are, I think it's sewn into the seam that is along the side there, so if you actually want to put your hands in your pockets to warm them up, it's a pain in the neck. So with this here, it does have a lining. Now, that's what's kind of cool about it. It has a little bit of a lining, so it's actually a little bit thicker, you know, overall total than this one. But I don't know, man. You know, I just think that this is a better jacket overall. So if you're looking between the Jack shirt and the Wool Cruiser, I would go with the Mackinac Cruiser any day. Okay, so here are the Mackinac Wool bibs. Same Mackinac Wool, nice stuff. And they are 475 bucks. Now, who's going to be actually wearing these? I'm sure that people do, and they've probably come to rely on these. But there's a company called Big Bill out there. And they offer a pair of wool pants very similar to this. They are a little bit different, but close enough, which are actually 175 bucks. Now, if it was up to me, I would buy two of the big bills and none of these. It just seems like, I don't, again, I don't see where the value is. Truth be told, you could actually buy like three pairs of the big bills and be close to the price of that. So, you know, uh, Filson's really just kind of getting a little crazy with their prices, in my opinion. Look at that photo. Nice job. The lined wool cape coat. This is a very nice. I, I love this kind of Sherpa lining. Um, and I think that, you know, it, this is probably one of the warmest, except for that one we saw in the front, which was 800 some odd dollars. Now, this one here is not cheap. This is closer to 700 bucks. We got 695 there. So, you know, I mean, this is very, very expensive. But at the same time, if you need a little bit more warmth, say you live up in Canada or just a colder climate, this is probably what you're going to want. Now, that being said, is it better for layering? See, the thing is with the Mackinac Cruiser, I like it because I'll put like a down puffer jacket underneath it. This, on the other hand, I think might be better on its own. You know, you put that on over one of these, right? You're wearing this and you put that on, you're probably good to go. Some other sweaters, they actually seem to be kind of leaning hard into the sweater thing, which is an interesting choice. But either way, made in Scotland, you know, so I bet you these are pretty nice, about 300 bucks. It's, uh, it's on the high end for some wool sweaters, but still. Uh, over here, we got the tin cloth insulated work vest. You know, again, I think that they really, their CCF line is their work line, which is weird because Filson itself was a workwear company until they went really kind of stylized here. I think that for this price here, you're, you can get a lot better vest from another company. Uh, you know, any of the big ones. Oil finish, double tin pants. I've heard these are incredible. Um, a lot of people who I know, they don't hem them. They actually leave the bottom frayed. And I guess the reason behind that is so when you're walking through the woods, you don't get anything 
caught, right? So like supposedly, I think I saw a Wrangler star talking about that. So it was actually a pretty cool video. That being said, I would never wear these casually. I just don't think that they'd be comfortable. Most waxed stuff isn't, you know, you really, there's a trade off of comfort there. Either way. Now here's something cool. You actually see this guy here wearing this, which they call a wool jacket liner, right? So this is 300 bucks. You could clearly wear it on its own. And I bet you it looks dynamite. It has that sort of, um, you know, what do they call it? A varsity collar, some rib knit cuffs. So I bet you it could do pretty good work, you know, and that's a, that is a more palatable price for most people, especially you want to get into a wool jacket. And the fact that this does zip in as a liner to certain coats, that's pretty cool. Now this lined rag wool beanie is actually a pretty decent price. I think 45 bucks isn't bad for that. Um, you know, the United by Blue ones that I was giving away a little while ago, there's like 55. Now those are bison wool and stuff, but still very nice. This is the one I, I have right here. I love it. I actually have this in green and uh, it's awesome. I actually want to get the Western version of this because just something a little bit different. That's a great piece right there. Again, it's expensive, you know, but uh, you, you get what you pay for in that case for sure. So this is the insulated shelter cloth parka. It looks like this is just, so their shelter cloth is basically like a waxed canvas, um, but it looks like it's lined here. And I believe that actually has some, some wool lining, you know, sewn in there. Either way, it looks like it's actually a pretty dynamite option. That's very nice, but again, it's 500 bucks. Now, if it was up to me and I was looking, it, it depends on, depending on what you're gonna use it for, uh, it's not the toughest around and it's not the warmest around. If you can't, you know, not if you just can't live without the Filson version, then fine. There's a company that I saw called, and I'm probably gonna like butcher it here, but I think they're called Cool or maybe Cull, K-U-H-L, but the U has some accent over it. They have a pretty cool looking option um, that's very similar to this and a heck of a lot cheaper. So again, do you need the Filson name? And I bet you there's some differences there, but um, you know, for that price, that's a lot of money. Another really cool looking, I'm not really sure. I guess this is kind of give the illusion of, of movement and stuff. And uh, that's pretty cool, but I love that they do this. All right, so here's the vintage flannel work shirt. In my opinion, these are overpriced. I have one of their, their, their flannels. And to be honest with you, it is no better than my LL Bean flannel, which costs like 50 bucks, you know? And these guys get, these are 145 bucks. I don't think that they're worth it. I think that you can get a number of different um, shirts from any number of companies, okay? So American Giant has them, um, United by Blue. You have <laughs> Ironheart if you want to spend more money. You know, there's a lot of companies that make uh, Dixon if you want to get, you know, a more affordable version, uh, Grayers. There's a lot of different um, flannel shirt companies out there that are, are really honestly much better. But they do make it look good, don't they? And here's something else cool that they'll do. They'll sometimes take a, a story like this and weave it in and give you some really cool looking visuals, which is why I don't think anybody does a better job at a um, catalog than Filson. I look forward to getting this catalog, even though chances are I probably won't buy anything from it, especially something like this, a thousand dollar blanket robe. Now, um, number one, I don't wear a robe. Number two, I don't really like the way it looks. And also, is that in black and white, like this photo, or is this in color and they're not showing us? I don't know. You know, it's, it's just kind of, I'm not, I don't know what's going on here. So, you know, wool, uh, it's a wool cotton blend. I'm not gonna pay $1,000 for that. That's just, who would? That's crazy. Pretty cool stuff. Look at this, he's got camo on his lens. That's pretty sweet. Like I said, this is the kind of stuff I think they do right. Now here's something that's interesting, a handmade sweater. You can find handmade sweaters, but they're kind of difficult to, to track down. You know, last year I did a video on the fisherman sweater, which is great. I mean, I, I think it's a really cool sweater, but they're all machine made, the ones that I, I saw. Now, supposedly you can find handmade versions, and this is one right here. They're a lot chunkier. They're just better overall. You get that handmade quality. That being said, I don't really care for the designs on this. Doesn't look like it's offered in any other coloration. And uh, if you wanna pay 600 bucks for it, um, you are on your own. Now here's their Mackinac blanket. Again, the Mackinac wool is great. But that being said, I think that there are other options, of course. So 285 bucks, you can go to Fairbolt Woolen Mills and get one for $225. Any of the woolen mills, Johnson Woolen Mills, Pendleton Woolen Mills, you can go and you could find expensive, yes, because wool is expensive, but blankets, okay? So if, unless you really are in love with that Filson wool, I, I just, I think they, they just, they charge too much for most things, sadly. 
cool, very cool blanket. So they're taking some, you know, some old designs. That's 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 pretty damn cool, actually. I think. Again, beautiful. So I think sometimes in a case like this, where that's what you're looking for, it's like, okay, that's it. I gotta have it. And so some of these are definitely items like that, where it's a once in a lifetime purchase. So here's the lightweight down jack shirt. So they love to do that jack shirt, shirt jack kind of thing. And so these are excellent as a mid layer, as you see this guy wearing here. Looks like he's wearing that shelter cloth uh, thing we were looking at earlier with a mid layer of this, which is great because it, tra it traps a lot of warm air and holds it against your body. And he's got his base layer and stuff here. So these are excellent, but I think for that price, okay, they're getting 250 bucks for that. For my money, I would get the Carhartt Gilliam jacket, which doesn't have like the shoulder, the, the pocket here and all that stuff. And there's a few differences, but uh, for my money, because those are hundred bucks, I'd get two of those. I just don't see the, the value here. The down cruiser. So they just took the, the cruiser, you know, style here and made it into a down version, which is pretty damn cool. I think that's actually, that's a pretty neat option. So uh, if you like that four pocket design, which is really useful, there you go. So here we go, we got some actually, they, they've started to branch out to women's stuff, which is really cool. And they have unique colorations like this one here. So this is, again, their jack shirt, but the women's version, I think that's a really cool look there. And, um, you know, I've actually like brought a couple of these to my wife saying, hey, what do you think about this? Would you ever want something like that? It's not really her style, um, but I think it looks dynamite on, uh, on the right person, especially when they're using it for, you know, its intended purpose. Let's be honest, most people probably aren't gonna be using it for dog sledding and stuff. But here you go, you got their trapper coat, just like we saw in the beginning for men. And these of course are very expensive. You know, they do a nice job. This one it looks like it has a little bit of a flare at the bottom there again, more for a woman, but very cool. Pretty interesting here, the handmade vest for women. So again, a lot of that really cool looking handmade quality. You put this thing on and um, I don't think many people would guess that it's a Filson, but that's what I like that they do. Sometimes they do some interesting things like that. So here's the women's down cruiser vest. Again, talk about an excellent mid layer, you know, or most of the time, I bet you could wear that as a, an outer layer and it'd be, you'd be covered. That's really cool. What a great job they did here of the coloration of their sweaters to this fox. I mean, excellent picture. I mean, look at that photo of that fox. That's amazing. Now this is their, um, their 4GG. I don't know idea what that's called. Heritage crew neck sweater. And that's that's great and everything, but um, you know they're they're again three hundred bucks. So other options out there. Here's something you won't find many options of. That's a shearling vest. That's really cool. This is the wool packer hat. Um, I have one of these. I love it. I wear it all the time. I uh, cannot recommend that enough. And so I think it. So it's gone up a little bit in price, but still well worth it at about ninety five bucks. Shearling mittens, I bet you those are dynamite. Again, I'm a big fan of shearling. I think that when you put something on like this, it's like incredibly warm, Some, sometimes like overwhelmingly warm. And I like, if you look at this here, they, they kind of use their old label, which is really cool. All right, moving along. Here's their 48 hour duffel bag. Um, You know, here's the thing. If it's not made out of their, their rugged twill, I'm kind of not interested. I have their backpack and I think is their shelter cloth or something like that. Uh, or maybe it's their tin cloth. I can't remember. It's okay. It's just okay. But their rugged twill is amazing. So this one here doesn't appear to be in that. So I'm going to leave that right behind. A couple throw blankets, oil finish, jack shirt again. You know, I think they kind of use that jack shirt a little bit too much. It gets confusing. And let's face it, most of these, nobody's going to, they're gonna, not going to confuse that for a shirt. That's a jacket all day long. So here again, we have their duffels. These don't appear to be in that rugged twill. You can get them in the rugged twill, and I hope that they don't dis discontinue it because that stuff wears like iron. Honest to God, it can go toe to toe with most leather. So in my opinion, these are great if you can get them in the um, in the rugged twill. Now take a look at this right here. You see this little keeper that they put there? They originally had that on the original briefcase, okay, which we'll probably see later. Now they did away with it. And that's one of my favorite parts of that. You can close it up and you have both handles together. It really does a nice job. And their bridal leather is fantastic too. So here's something that's interesting. Most companies like Filson, like Carhartt, like Dickies, they won't actually go to the trouble of making their own boots. After all, that's a lot of tooling, design, all that kind of stuff. Let somebody else do it and then basically private label it for you. 
Now, these are made in Portugal. Um, Goodyear welted, you know, not really that bad of a price. They're okay. They're in the Red Wing territory. Uh, and maybe Red Wing actually makes these. I don't know. Oh, no, they're made in Portugal. Okay, so Red Wing doesn't make them. But uh, I'm trying to think of what Portuguese brands are over there or factories. I know that, um, was it Urban Shepherd or something like that are made over there? I'm not sure I would go with the Filson boots. Uh, you kind of know my stance on Filson flannels. Too expensive for what you get. Even these here, 100 bucks. I just don't think they're worth it. So base layers. One of the things that most people don't know, and I certainly didn't, even my early days as a lifty, which is the guy who operates the chairlift, is how to dress warm. And this is one of the key ingredients. It starts here at the base layer. And the idea here is to basically keep moisture off of your skin and allow, you know, um, a certain amount of breathing. So these are excellent. And it looks like they're getting about 160 bucks for this here, this like, um, you know, mock zip. This almost looks like it's a bit more of like an outer layer. It looks like it has a hood, uh, more of a crew here, a couple of, um, you know, long johns and stuff. And that's cool. Uh, to me, though, you can get the Heli Hansen version of this right here. Um, and almost identical. And matter of fact, I think it's probably a little bit better for way less. So I think it's 90 bucks for the Heli Hansen version. Again. I would shop around when it comes to stuff like this. Staples that other companies do well. Smart Wool, I'll bet you has these in a similar price. So, you know, it pays to shop around. Some knives, again, pretty cool stuff. I have no, no objection to that, you know. I mean, I don't really have an objection to any of this stuff. You know, it's the open market. Here's the Western vest that I definitely want. 250 bucks is pretty steep, though. I would get one of these uh, secondhand. No doubt. And plus, it's really hard to find this in any other color besides that charcoal. So, you know. And then here we go. We got a Western flannel shirt. Eh, you know. I think I've beaten that to death. This I thought was pretty neat. This is a fleece jacket. It looks like it has some reinforcements here on the forearms. Very similar to another fleece jacket that I know. Again, so this is 175 bucks. The Yukon uh, fleece jacket from Carhartt, very similar. Has a hood. Has reinforcements of Cordura here. And on the shoulders, and that fleece jacket costs 129 bucks. So if you're going to use this for outdoor activities, so many activities, I would go with the Carhartt version. You know, you want to pay 175 bucks. It's not extraordinarily expensive. Uh, go for it, especially if you want that coloration, which you can't get in the Carhartt. T-shirts, same kind of feeling here. Just a little bit too expensive for what you get. I would rather get an American Giant T-shirt, uh, a pocket tee, you know, a work tee. The Ariat ones are great. The Carhartt K87 is great. So a lot of versions um, when it comes to t-shirts. The padded computer bag, again, I think, so there's the keeper again. They kept it on this, which they should have, and that's really great. Here's the rugged twill again. You don't see that rugged twill popping up much. Uh, I don't know why. It's a great material, and I'll bet you these things last forever. That's pretty expensive, though, for a, a you know, kind of combination textile wallet. I would like to see one in person. If the finishing is extraordinary, that's a different story. Waffle Knit Thermal Crew, love these. That being said, that's pretty expensive. Um, now, for my money, I would rather go with the American Giant version, made in the USA, and they're really chunky, really warm, and really well thought out. So, that's my mileage. Yours may vary. The Down Cruiser Vest, great looking. Um, look at it here. You see, that's the thing. They dress it up like this. This dude rocking two hay bales, um, you know, I, they, they just do a good job at making it look appealing, right? Like you look at this guy, you go, ah, oh, that could totally be me. I'm going to go find some hay bales. And uh, that's that's the magic of Filson. So here we got their wool shirt. This is pretty cool. I like these. And actually, I think that looks pretty dynamite right there. That's not a bad price either. You know, it is wool. So, you know, 100, what's that, 165 bucks? Yeah, that's not too bad. Filson Denim, I did a video on the Filson Rail Splitter Jeans, which I think are these, maybe? They were okay. They have one fatal flaw, and uh, you have to go check out that video to find out what it is. Let's just say I won't be buying any more Filson Denim. I just don't think it's worth it. You don't really get... You don't get what I look for in denim, which is either it's very interesting and unique, um, it's made in the USA, or some other place where I, I'm interested in their craftsmanship, and it's not like decently affordable. It's pretty expensive for what you get. Even the selvage or the double fronts. I would go with 1620 workwear if it was, uh, you know, if I was looking for some double fronts. Maybe the B01 from Carhartt, you know, like the tried and true old school ones. Filson, I, I, I think they kind of swung and missed with that one. 
So here's the lined denim cruiser jacket. Again, this layout, it's cool that they kept, see that right there? That originally was called a compass pocket. So if you, you wanna put your Zippo in there or God knows what, um, you certainly can. This thing has more pockets than you can shake a stick at. It's, that's a great jacket, it really is. Now, what's the price? Uh, 475 bucks. Yeah, I'm not gonna buy that. Because if you weren't married to this layout, okay, and you could deal with like two chest pockets and maybe a couple hand warmer pockets, you could go to Pendleton. They have one now on sale for 132 bucks, originally 189. Or Telesin, which is a dedicated denim, you know, denim company made in the USA for 340 bucks. So for my money, that's what I would do. I, I think it's a great looking jacket. And I think if you love the Mackinac Cruiser and you want this version, more power to you. But when we're talking about bang for buck, some other companies do it better. Now, this is pretty interesting. I like this. Uh, so they changed the bottom hand warmer pockets. This is a shorter, you know, um, as, it's, as it says right there. Uh, but again, 350 bucks. That's pretty expensive. I like that lining a lot, though. That's really, really cool. Good job, Filson. That's what they do best. They are very good at making this stuff look good. Um, I think that they have some very talented people over there designing these. Some goat skin gloves. I would go to Sullivan Glove, maybe Vermont Glove to get a pair of goatskin gloves lined like that. You can get them much cheaper. Their watch cap. Um, what did they get for that? 25 bucks? Eh, not bad. The Alaskan Guide shirt. No, I don't think so. Again, go to LL Bean. I think you get a better product for about half the price. 21 Whale Corduroy shirt. I think Corduroy is one of those textiles that people have sort of forgotten about and how good it is it should not be forgotten that is an excellent shirt okay and if you're not interested in this one here because let's say it's a bit expensive this is 135 bucks there's a company called united by blue that makes these kind of things it's like a shirt jack so it's like an over shirt i think they call it that's in green and blue really nice i have one it's awesome and i believe that they are normally 118 i think they're on sale right now for 70 bucks so 70 bucks Get two of those for the price of this. That's what I would do. Some other stuff here, 24 hour tin briefcase. Filson does a good job with their bags. They really do, it's hard to argue with that. Filson's scout shirt. I actually have a scout shirt in a green and gold coloration, which I just thought looked dynamite when I saw it in the pictures like here. In person, it's not so great. Uh, it's okay, but you know, same thing for me. I think there are other better options. Here we go, the Rugged Twill Compact Briefcase. So Rugged Twill is awesome. You can see the texture here. It's insane. They did away with the keeper. Why did they do that? I don't understand it. This is a great bag. And, and a lot of times I find myself going back to my original Filson briefcase just because it does so many things so well. And then they got rid of that, which is a real bummer. So if you can go on eBay and find an original briefcase in Rugged Twill with the Talon zippers and with that keeper, you got yourself a real gem. All right, we're getting to the end here, so thank you for sticking with me. Henley Guide Sweater. Looks like something you'd find from like Arcteryx Leaf, which I think is their law enforcement and army, something or other, anyway. Um, Bilson slash Extra Tough. Quick tip, a lot of times all they do is just change a few things, so I would check out Extra Tough if you don't want to spend this price. The Filson Whites collaboration that they did, Filson marked it up, I think, 100 bucks, and you can get that exact thing um, I don't think it had the Filson name on it, obviously, from Whites for 100 bucks less. And when you're talking about $600, $700 boots, that's worth it. This is a nice piece. Now, again, the Fisherman sweater I think is awesome. I like this color. And, uh, you know, it is expensive, 400 bucks. Is this, is this the handmade one, though? Uh, if it is, then that's I think it's worth it. So pretty cool stuff here, some dry roll top stuff. Very cool. I know that Yeti has started to come out with things like this. I know, again, some people don't like Yeti. Every time I mention them, people start to get upset. <laughs> it's just gear. Come on, calm down. Anyway, cool stuff. Um, yeah, 175 bucks. Same thing. Pretty expensive, but it is probably... I'll bet you that's a pretty well thought out bag. So their Rain Defender kind of stuff here. That's pretty cool. So this is their Skagit rain jacket and pants. I have the Carhartt Storm Defender combination which I have used extensively in the field and love. No problems at all with them. The buttons, everything, the zippers, everything is waterproof. Just 
phenomenal and actually much, much cheaper. So 129 bucks for the jacket, the Carhartt version, uh, 395 bucks. Do you think it's that much better? How much drier can something keep you? Okay, so here's something that's really confusing. This looks like a shirt, right? That looks a lot like a shirt to me. Well, it's called the Jack shirt, okay? And in the beginning, we had a, let me see if we can find it without taking up too much time here. If you remember, so we were in the wool section, right? So we have the Mackinac Jack shirt. And this is what I'm talking about when it gets gets confusing, right? That, that's a, that is a jacket all day long. Nobody's gonna confuse it for a shirt. Mackinac Jack shirt. Here's just the regular Jack shirt. Call it something else, Filson, please. Now, that being said, this is very nice, okay? It is wool. I like this coloration. It has a very Christmassy, festive kind of vibe to it, which I have nothing against. I think that's really cool, probably very cozy. But what does it cost? Okay, this is uh, 350 bucks. 350 bucks. There's a company called Duckworth out there, made in the USA. I think all their stuff is made in Montana, Montana wool. And they have a shirt called the Snow Crest that's $330. Now, that being said, it's only available in one color. This one's not really available in many either. But if you like dark blue, then you're in luck. So that's it, guys. This is the Filson catalog. I hope that you enjoyed it. I really, I love doing this kind of stuff. And I like watching these kind of videos too. So that's why I wanted to make it. Anyway, guys, much more stuff coming up. And I really appreciate you watching. So thank you and uh, catch you later.